Hello everyone. Uh, today it's the first video of our Palo Alto virtual appliance deployment on Azure with HA using Azure Load Balancer. There are multiple ways that you can deploy Palo Alto on Azure. Uh, either it could be use Azure Load Balancer, Azure Application Gateway, F5 Load Balancer, or you can choose any third-party load balancer. But for the sake of this video, we'll choose Azure Load Balancer. In uh, future videos, we may come up with uh, with other type of load balancers as well. So moving on to components, uh, we'll be needing two Palo Alto virtual appliances. That is to achieve the high availability. Even if one virtual appliance goes down, we should still have um, our traffic flowing. So that for that reason, we'll be using two Palo Alto virtual appliances in two different zones. Region will be same, but the zones will be different. We'll talk about that later. So we'll be needing one internal load balancer, one external load balancer. We'll be needing two virtual networks one virtual network will be used for the palo alto and load balancer second vnet or virtual network will be used for the test vms we'll be needing uh, one routing table we'll be needing two security groups first security group will be used for the management interfaces on the firewall and second security group will be used for the wan interfaces on the firewall in total, we'll be needing five public IPs. Two public IPs will be used on the WAN interfaces. Two public IPs will be used on the management interfaces. And one public IP will be used on the external load balancer. This external load balancer will be responsible for all inbound traffic or north to south traffic. And we'll be uh, needing two test VMs. Uh, so uh, these VMs will be used to verify east-west and north-south traffic once uh, all the configuration is completed. Moving on to subnets, we'll be needing uh, five subnets in total. First subnet for first VNet, first uh, interfaces, second uh, VNet for the unfirst, third for the management, fourth for the test VM1, and fifth for the test VM2. The reason we will be needing two different subnets for the test VMs is to verify east-west traffic. So, so we'll talk about that uh, later. Moving on, we have a reference architecture guide. Uh, this is a solution design from the Palo Alto, which shows that you can have um, multiple subscriber VNets, whether, whether it could be your VMs, your containers, your web apps, whatever you have on Azure. You need to enable VNet pairing and uh, in terms of firewall components, there will be internal load balancer. This internal load balancer will route all the traffic to the VM series virtual appliances, Palo Alto virtual appliances. And this Palo Alto virtual appliances will um, send traffic. If it is outbound traffic, then it will send using the WAN interfaces. If it is the internal traffic, then it will pass according to the routing configuration. Then there will be external load balancer. This external load balancer will be configured for all the inbound traffic. And again, both the WAN interfaces of the firewalls will be added to the, this external load balancer and heartbeat connections will be configured as well. Next slide um, is about the um, our solution design. This solution uh, will be implementing uh, in this video series. So there will be two VNets. Test VM1 will be hosted in the network one. Test VM2 will be hosted in the network 2. Then we'll have an internal load balancer. This will be the uh, IP address for, uh, for a virtual IP or a, a load balancer IP. On the internal load balancer, then this internal load balancer will route traffic to the both the firewalls. Uh, we'll be using uh, 172, 16, 200, or 4 on the Ethernet 2 of the firewall and 200 or 5 on the Ethernet 2 on uh, second firewall. Both firewalls will be uh, provisioned in UK South region, as you can see here, but the zone will be different. So first firewall will be deployed in zone 1 of UK South region. Second firewall will be deployed in the zone 2 of UK South region. So this is to achieve the high availability on zone level as well. Because in case the zone 1 goes down, zone 2 firewall should be able to process all the traffic and take the load 
Similarly, we'll have the WAN interfaces on the firewall 200.4 and 200.5, and then uh, these uh, external inter WAN interfaces will be added to the external load balancer. This external load balancer will have its own public IP, which will be used for the inbound traffic. So, for the inbound traffic, we'll be using external load balancer, but for the outbound traffic, will be using the WAN interfaces and the public IPs that are assigned on the firewall. Yeah, so another important thing is that Ethernet 0 on the firewall will always be used for the management interface. Ethernet 1 will always be used for the untrust interface on the firewall and Ethernet 2 will be used for the trust interface on the firewall. If you want to have a DMZ interface, you can configure another interface ethernet 3 and you can configure it for the uh, dmc zone next slide is our project plan uh, in first this is the first video where, where we are we are just going through the project plan in second video we'll create resource group and virtual networks in third video we'll spin first virtual appliance in zone one in fourth video we'll configure second virtual appliance in zone two of uk south in fifth video, we'll configure the firewall interfaces, zones, virtual routers, management profile on both the firewalls. In sixth video, we'll configure NAT and security policies on the virtual appliances. In seventh video, we'll configure the NSGs. In eighth video, we'll configure internal load balancer. In ninth video, we'll configure the external load balancer. In tenth video, we'll create test VMs and enable VNet pairing with the firewall VNet. In 11th video, we'll configure inbound NAT and test RDP traffic from outside and outbound internet traffic. 12th and last video, we'll configure east-west traffic and verify through the firewall logs that both the test, uh, test VMs should be able to communicate to each other through the firewall. That's it. And that's it yeah so this is just a high level overview of what we are going to do and how we are going to configure palo alto uh, virtual appliances on azure uh, if you have any question you can send me an email or you can comment down below thank you so much see you in the next video